How's it going everybody? This is Pete the Bush. This is episode 4 of my investing series and today we're going to talk about investment gains envy. It is something that you would hear from your friends or coworker when they talk about an investment, maybe through social media or something, and they talk about, oh, I bought uh, so-and-so stock, and you notice maybe like recently it like popped, so then they like to brag about it and say, oh yeah, I held some of that, I made a thousand dollars from that, anything of that sort where they, they tell you they made some gains. Now this is kind of like a Facebook post, but in real life because people are gonna tell you all the good things that happened to, to their investment portfolio, they're gonna say, something good and then they're gonna filter out all the bad stuff. If some days they lost 5%, 10% or something, they're not gonna tell you this. So you gotta understand that everything you hear is just gonna be positive and you really shouldn't take it to heart and kind of feel envious of someone else that made a whole bunch of gains. Really, the only metric that should matter is your total portfolio gains and how much of that it is over the S&P index. Now S&P index historically goes up maybe six to eight percent or so on average. If you make more than that, then you are a uh, genius investor basically because hedge funds and stuff, not all of them can even do that. So when people talk about an individual stock that has increased a lot, they're not talking about their whole portfolio. Maybe one individual one went up and several went down. You don't know what's going on and you're not going to ask them, whoa, hey, yeah, that's great. What about your total portfolio over the long term? Because that's the metric that matters over the long term. Maybe even over one year, their total portfolio has gone up a lot, okay? 10, 20, 30% or something. But it doesn't matter if it did go up that much because maybe the previous year or the next year, it's gonna go down. What does matter is the average gains over a long period of time. So it won't even matter if they made good gains over five years, it's really over the really long term, five, 10, 20 years. And if you're able to consistently um, beat the S&P, which is very, very hard to do. So people don't talk about losing money. People, if they lost a bunch of money gambling, they're not gonna go, oh, I lost $1,000, I lost $10,000 gambling. They're not gonna bum people out by saying that. They're not gonna go around um, saying they lost a whole bunch of money when they're investing. Going up a level, it's not just your investment portfolio that matters, it's also everything else that's part of your net worth. Maybe your total net worth is uh, rising, but then maybe your uh, portfolio is just kind of staying the same. I don't know. So there's a thing with hedge funds, right? Hedge funds is kind of like a fund where they invest in a small amount of stocks and then only really rich people can contribute to that and then they can make a lot of gains. But then the only hedge funds that do survive are the really good ones. So right now, if you take a snapshot of uh, all the hedge funds, you look at it, what's available, they're all gonna say, oh, they're very successful because only the really successful ones are still in business. All the really crappy ones died off, so then you don't get a good snapshot of, hey, how many succeeds and how many fails. The thing I wanna get through to everybody is that when you hear of a stock, you may already be emotionally biased towards it. So it's hard to make an objective, uh, calculated decision in your investment choice. Historically speaking, for myself, I never had a good experience with trading stock that I've heard through someone, uh, through friends or something like that. It's always better, um, it seems like to me, to kind of just look at stocks in a broad general sense and you kind of look at various ones and weigh the consequences of each, look at the company, um, look at how viable they are, they're, they're, uh, just kind of evaluate the company, which I have in another video, and buy the stock through those methods where you're not very stuck to one single one. And of course, don't be envious of anybody when they say they made a whole bunch of gains. Sometimes people would just like to play it up and say, oh, I'm so smart. Um, I, I played the market, I have a portfolio, and I made so-and-so gains in so-and-so stock. Maybe it's true, um, but maybe it's also not. Maybe they made a whole bunch here, and then maybe they lost some in real estate or, or something. It's just really hard to guess unless you're actually their accountant and you look at their uh, net worth gain. So to me, a lot of times, all of this, when, when I hear it, I don't even ask for this information. 
Uh, sometimes people volunteer and I'm like, I, I don't really want to know, you know, how much you have or whatever. But when I do hear it, um, I take a filter and think of it as, okay, you know, it's just a small portion of it. And, you know, I really should just kind of go, uh-huh, okay, good. Um, but, you know, I'm not going to ask about their total portfolio or their net worth or something like that. So it's really good to just ignore those things and probably to not even invest in those same stock because you know um, you're emotionally uh, biased towards those stocks already. So that's all I have to say. I know this video is kind of like just talk, but I feel that it's very important to understand yourself um, when you're doing investments. Don't forget to give me a like over here, comment down below and let me know what kind of ratio are you hearing from friends that they're making good gains. It's likely close to 100% because people don't want to tell you bad things. And don't forget to subscribe over here. Thanks for watching.